أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية أمير المؤمنين ولئمة المعصومين عليهم السلام والحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم مصطفى محمد على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أستق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله الأسماء الحسنى فادعوه بها آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد محمد أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala There is no doubt that it's due to his kindness and generosity that he provides for us opportunities as beautiful as these where we gather in remembrance of him tabaraka wa ta'ala next i begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful ali ibn abi talib alayhi mafdalu salatu wa salam muhammad wa would begin so many of his sermons by saying usikum wa nafsi bi taqwa allah al azim I advise you and I advise myself to be God conscious, God fearing, pious human beings. We continue with the most beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the name that we are continuing from the last two times that I have been here is Al Mun'im. Al Mun'im, as we discussed, is a very beautiful and a lengthy name. So tonight, inshallah, or today, we will be finishing um, the, the meaning or understanding of this name. Al Mun'im is the one who provides bounties. Yeah, who provides ni'am, yani ni'ama from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who provides these bounties is known as al-mun'im. We said that the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can generally be divided or understood that he gives three types of bounties. He gives material bounties, which are for example the food, the drink, our children, sustenance. These all fall under the material bounties. The second are immaterial bounties, things that we cannot touch but having to do with dunya. So for example, safety, security, happiness, health, all of these things would generally fall under these immaterial bounties having to do with dunya. The third type of gifts that God provides are immaterial bounties having to do with akhirah. Yeah, so for example, hidayah, guidance, qurb Allah, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and of course the greatest... Um, the greatest gift, which would be Jannah. Yeah? That if we have reached Jannah, we have succeeded. There is no doubt. So these are the type of immaterial bounties having to do with Akhirah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. There is no doubt that the immaterial bounties are greater than the material bounties. We have to use the material bounties to make us reach that stage of perfection where we can then embrace and experience the immaterial bounties. Okay? Furthermore, we said that these bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are split into two. So all of these bounties that we described are generally split into two. They are general and specific. The general bounties are those bounties which are provided to all human beings, all creatures rather of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether they believe or they don't believe, they experience and are living under these general bounties. The specific bounties are those who are, are reserved for those who surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Those who submit to the will and the desires of God, they then receive the specific bounties, the specific gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now where we, this is where we left off last time. These specific bounties of God are further divided into what is known as the outward bounties, yeah, that which are zahir, and then there are those which are batin. 
yeah, the inward or the hidden bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah number 31, verse number 20, Alam taraw anna Allah sakhara lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa asbagha alaykum ni'amahu zahiratan wa batina. Yeah. He says, have you not seen, do you not see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disposed for you whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth and he has showered upon you blessings both outward and inward. Yeah. Now the question is, what are these outward bounties and what are these inward bounties? There are many explanations, but we will pick one in particular. It comes from our fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salam. <laughs> He says, Amma an ni'matu zahira, fahuwa an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Wa ma ja'a bihi min ma'rifatillahi azza wa jal wa tawheedihi. He said, as far as the outward bounties are concerned, this is the Prophet. Peace and blessings be upon him and the... Um, and his progeny and the understanding or the knowledge of God that he brought and his oneness. So these are that external or the apparent bounties which the Prophet has brought with him. He says, Wa But as far as the inward or the hidden bounties are concerned, فَوِلَايَتُنَا أَهْلُ الْبَيْتِ وَمُوَدَّتَنَا Allahumma salli ala Oh, that was terrible, yeah? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So he says, as far as these inward bounties are concerned, this is our wilaya, yeah? The love for the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam. What we understand from this, right, is that the Prophet, um, we cannot just say that we've taken one without the other. We need both of them. Yeah? There is a need for these external or apparent bounties first and then to get inside and accept the inward bounties. So we can say that the outward bounties is Islam while the inward bounties is Iman. Yeah? And you can't have Iman without Islam and Islam without Iman is incomplete as well. Therefore, we as believers require both of these bounties Zahiran wa Batina. Yeah? We require both of these bounties to be successful. Now what becomes our role with this name? Yeah? Um, I believe that our role with this name is, is, pretty, is pretty obvious, it's simple, right? But we'll describe two particular roles that we have. The first one summarizes a lot of the responsibilities that we have with the bounties of God. It's to recount them, is to remember them, and is to be thankful over that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us. This is a pretty summarizing role that we have. We must be grateful for what God has provided for us. Yeah? All of us are living under the, the security and the provisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are thriving on His bounties. We must be appreciative of them. Right? And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah number 93 verse number 11, He says, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ yeah? He says, as for your Lord's blessings, proclaim them, announce them, be proud of them. Yeah? And you don't hide the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's very interesting is that this particular proclamation or announcement, فَحَدِّثْ has different meanings. Yeah? So the first meaning is, that if you are blessed with something, use it for good. Yeah? For hadith, yani proclaim it in good actions. So if you're blessed with a good voice, use it for good. If you're blessed with knowledge, use it for good. If you're blessed with wealth, use it for good. One of the worst things that we could do is take these bounties of God and then use it against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? So somebody who has a good voice will then turn to singing. Somebody who has been blessed with knowledge will challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody who has wealth will hoard and not provide to others. This is how we misuse the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But God says, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Proclaim it, use it for good. Yeah? So my brothers and sisters, it's very important that we recognize the bounties that have been provided to us.
and that we use it for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has intended us to use it for. The second understanding of fahaddis or proclaim is that we should remember and proclaim the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showered upon us in the form of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Muhammad. We should be proud of this gift of wilaya. Yeah? Uh, we cannot understate it that how lucky we are that we have found this path. Yeah? We know that many of us, if we had not been born into this, we would have not found it. So, and this is we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this because there is extreme reward. Yeah? There is extreme um, satisfaction in knowing that we are on that right religion. Yeah, we are on that right path. And especially this path of Ali Muhammad, it is extremely um, beneficial to us. You know, there's a very beautiful hadith that I'd like to read just to let us know the status of those um, that, we, that we love, that we proclaim. Yeah? There's a hadith that comes from Umm Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, when she says, Annaha qal, annaha qalat, Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam yaqul. He says, "Ma qawmun ijtami'u yadhkuruna fadla Ali ibn Abi Talib illa habatat alayhim malaika." Malaika to sama. He says, "Whenever a community gathers and remembers Ali, angels begin to descend from the heavens." Yeah. Hatta tahuffa bihim fa idha tafarraku arajat al malaika ila al sama until the people disperse. And when the people disperse, the angels return back to the heavens. فَيَقُولُ لَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنَّا نَشُمُّ مِنْ رَائِحَتِكُمْ مَا نَشُمُّهُ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The other angels then gather around these angels and say that we smell a fragrance from you that no other angels have. Yeah? Tell us, he says, فَلَمْ نَرَى رَائِحَةً أَطْيَبْ مِنْهَا And we have never smelt a fragrance more beautiful than this fragrance. فَيَقُولُ كُنَّ إِنْدَ قَوْمٍ يَذْكُرُوا مُحَمَّدًا وَأَهْلَ بَيْتِهِ Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He says, we were just part of a community that was remembering the Prophet and his family. Yeah? So the angels, you know what they say? They said, take us back to them. Yeah? The angels now, the other angels say, take us so that we can participate. So the other angels tell them that they've already gone home. Yeah? So the angels reply back, it's very beautiful. It says, fine, they've gone home, but at least take us to the place where they were seated so we can get that fragrance within us. Yeah? Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Yeah? That these halls, you know, once we leave these halls, these halls continue in the remembrance of Ali ibn Talib. Yeah? These halls will continue in the remembrance of the Ahlul Bayt Yeah, There is blessings just being in these halls of gatherings. My brothers and sisters, this is what is meant. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ Be proud of what the bounties God has given us. Never be ashamed to be the wali and the wilayat who have fallen for the wilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib This is our badge of Allahumma salli ala. This is our badge of honor. Yeah? This is our badge of success. This is our passport, isn't it? Yeah? To cross the Sirat, insha'Allah. The second role that we have with this name is that with these bounties, our job is to be humble. Yeah? Our job is to have humility. Right? Just because, yes, I have found the right religion, never do I have the authority to look down upon others and say, these guys are going to Jahannam. That is not our responsibility. That is not our role. Our role is to be humble. Yeah? Just because I have found this path, does that mean that I'm guaranteed Jannah? No, of course not. Yeah? What makes me so arrogant to think that I have gotten Jannah? Do I possess the keys of Jannah? Have I written my name in Jannah? No. So it's part of my responsibility then, as those who have been provided the greatest gifts, to have the greatest humility. Yeah? To be humble in that what we have. And it is only through humility. Yeah? There's a tradition that says, yeah? It is through the humility and humbleness that bounties are completed. Yeah? It means our wilayat will never be completed unless we are humble 
human beings. So this is the role that we have and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he continues to provide for us his bounties and that we can recognize them, proclaim them and be humble with them as well insha'Allah. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. This week, I'm I'm sure what you have heard, we've all heard in the news, the major incident that has happened um, in America, in Missouri, in Ferguson, Missouri, um, where a grand jury decided not to convict um, a police officer or go to even trial, basically, um, in the shooting of a 19-year-old, I believe. Uh, young man, unarmed young man. This has been a major story that has been in the news and I'm sure you have been um, following that as well. I want to just discuss some of these points from this, from this case a little bit. Um, without going into too much details about the actual case and what has happened um, and how it unfolded, uh, without going into the, the characteristics of the young man who was shot. Some say he was an angel, others say he, that he was a thug. Um, either way that you look at it, I think there is a larger underlying problem that I'd like to discuss today. Yeah? Um, and that is the issue of race. Um, the race in America in particular, but race throughout the world. Um, the officer was um, a white man who shot a black teenager um, who was unarmed uh, for whatever reason. Now, I don't want to presuppose the, the prejudice or the racism of that officer. So let's, let's forget this particular individual case and look at the, the larger problem of racism um, and targeting those of different skin colors that exist throughout this world. It would be naive of us to think that racism does not exist, right? Uh, we see that people of color are discriminated throughout the world. Um, even in our own cultures, the darker the skin, the more people are looked down upon. This is a reality, right? Um, and this exists in all the countries, especially in America, yeah, and exists here too as well. Um, we have all been 
we are all generally people of color here who have come to this center. And I'm sure one time or another we have felt discriminated upon. And in America, this problem exists in a large scale, right? We have to remember that it was, what, maybe 150 years ago that slavery was abolished. That country is founded on slavery. It succeeded through slavery. Um, 150 years ago, slavery was abolished, yet um, the blacks of that country were not given proper rights. They were discriminated upon. They had separate restaurants, separate drinking fountains, separate restrooms. All of this existed. And it was only 50 years ago when the civil rights movement abolished these discriminatory laws. So it's only been 50 years since blacks or African Americans in that country have been given equal rights. And even then till today, we know that they are not equal. They're not treated equal in that country. Um, we know that this discrimination exists, especially uh, when it comes from law enforcement down, right? If we just look at the statistics of the people who are pulled over, of the people who are um, arrested, of the people who are charged, even if you look at the statistics of those who are charged for the same crime, statistics show that I think 15 or 20 percent um, blacks are charged with 15 to 20 percent higher punishment for the same exact crime than a white person would in America. Right? And if you look at, for example, just in Ferguson, Missouri, um, 400, in the year 2013, 483 black people were arrested as opposed to 36 white yeah? in the whole city of Ferguson. 92% um, of the searches, stop and searches that were done were against black people, 92%. Yeah? While 86% of the cars that were stopped were black. Right? So we see that's discrimination. Yeah? I, living in America, felt that discrimination. Right? Um, I remember in my younger days when I didn't look like this. Yeah? Maybe I had baggy pants on or something. Um, but I remember being pulled over um, in Orange County. Right? And because of the way I looked, because of my color, um, the officers looked at my driver's license and said, you don't belong in this neighborhood. Yeah, leave this neighborhood, right? So that type of discrimination exists, and we can't deny or put our head in the sand and say that this doesn't exist. We as Muslims can and understand, we understand and feel sympathy and can relate to the persecution of people based on their race, based on their gender, based on their religion, yeah? Because we have been subjected to this type of discrimination ourselves. Right? And we must be sympathetic to these causes that are happening and can't ignore them because once we begin to ignore this, it will spread to us as well. Um, and this is what we have been taught by the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. In fact, this is the, this is the, the law of God, isn't it? Inna akramakum in the lahi atqaqum. Yeah, he says, indeed, the, the most noble or the most honorable of amongst you are those who have taqwa. Color doesn't matter. Right? For those who have been attending the lectures that we've been giving here, we've been discussing arrogance, and we'll discuss race in particular tomorrow, that race is one of the primary causes of arrogance in human beings. Right? And when you think about it, where does this come from? Right? Because as uh, the fitri nature, right? the way we are intrinsically created, race has no barrier, and race has no... Um, issue at all, right? And we see this in our children. Our children recognize color, yeah? But they don't discriminate based on color. They'll play with brown, white, black, doesn't matter, right? Um, but it's not like they're blind to the color. They see it, but they don't feel any superiority, right? Um, like the example that I gave, if one has a white car or a black car, can we say that the white car is superior than the black car if they're the same model? Of course not. That makes no sense. Why do we do that for race, right? We see how the Ahlul Bayt treated, right? How they reacted. In fact, many of the wives of the, uh, the imams and, the chil and their mothers of the imams were from Africa, isn't it? If you look at certain statistics online, they say that our 12th Imam, Imam Al Hujja, Ajalallahu Ta'ala, Muhammad. If you look at the ancestry of his, he's 2% Arab. Yeah? Well, maybe 60% he's African. Yeah? And then there's Persian in there. He's, I mean, he's, he's, he's mixed, right? And this is what we have been taught, that there is no superiority. There is no greatness when it comes to the color of our skin. Um, where, so we, we sympathize with this and we, um, we feel sorry for the people who are going through because we have gone through that. We continue to go through that. You and I may not, but our people do. People of our religion are constantly discriminated, right? Um, where we don't agree with those who are oppressed, 
um, is when they act out in violence, right? When they loot, when they kill, when they burn innocent properties, um, they, they rob stores that had nothing to do with anything that had happened for the sake of doing it. This is where we draw the line and say that we don't agree. Yeah? Um, this is not something that we um, are in line with. This is not something that we agree with. You know, people of conscience, um, when it comes from our Aima to our great saints, even to modern day civil rights um, activists like Gandhi, like Malcolm X, like Martin Luther King Jr. have always stood for nonviolence. Yeah? Violence doesn't solve any of the problems, especially when you are the one whose rights are being taken. So the point of mentioning all of this is A, that we are aware of what's happening in our world today. B, to recognize that racism exists. Yeah? Um, and it becomes our responsibility as individual citizens to make sure that at least we don't continue this cycle of racism. Yeah? If, if we want this cycle to break, it has to individually come from our hearts and then collectively we can form a movement which breaks that. So uh, what I want or from us is to individually recognize that this race has nothing to do with anything. Yeah? A lot of us come from Africa um, and it's, that racism has started from then. Yeah? And it continues till today where we see, for example, Africans or blacks lower than us because of what we experience. Same from Pakistan, India. Um, that can't creep into a free society like Canada that we live in. Yeah? In our mosques, we can't um, continue this cycle of racism against one another because of their skin color or because of their background or nationality. So the reason for mentioning this primarily and more, most importantly is that we need to remove this from our hearts. Yeah? Remove this feeling of arrogance from our hearts um, and recognize that God never approves of this type of discrimination. God never approves of this type of um, subjugation upon other people. Right? And this is not part of our religion. Um, and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the strength to be the kind of servants that He wants us to be, inshallah. And we pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for all those who are being oppressed, that He ends their oppression, inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم الله.